Hey everyone, welcome to Lauren.Live, the spirituality, health, and lifestyle podcast. I have Indra Zindler with me today from California. Hi. Hi there, how are you? Great, thanks for being on the show. Thanks for having me, what a treat. Absolutely, yeah, it's my pleasure. So Indra is an astrologer, a spiritual guide, and he's got a lot of wisdom to share with us today. Um, I'm gonna let him give it, you know, an intro on himself, who he is, whatever background you'd like to share with us. And just, um, I'd love for you to explain how you got into this, all the stuff, spirituality, what, you know, what was your background? Were you introduced to it as a child or did you come into it later in life? And then we'll dive deeper into, um, some things with mother Gaia and astrology and we'll see where, where things go. Okay. So, uh, how I can't really say I, uh, when I moved to California uh, 50 years ago, I started going to the metaphysical bookstore, which I uh, was kind of a new thing at the time, at least new to me. And I started buying books on spirituality and started buying books on astrology. And here, 50 years later, th- this has been my life. I was uh, early, mid-20s, so um, didn't really have any of it before, I think. I was thinking that what happened was, is I realized that there was more than I could see. If you walk into a room and you feel the energy, there's more than, um, than what you see. And so if there's more then the possibility is that there's no end to what is more. Mm -hmm. Anything is a possibility. And I have a feeling that that started with the, with the pot and drugs that we, we took back then. And I think it got me into a, a wider uh, a viewpoint of life. And uh, that's basically been my whole life is spirituality and um, um, finding the uh, true self, finding the peace that doesn't leave, that's permanent. Mm-hmm. Mm, so you've always just been kind of drawn to it. And the more you learn, the more you, it, you know, it opens up. It's like I learned that in my philosophy class in college, right? The more questions you ask, the more you have actually <laughs> just, yeah. Well, actually what happens is, is that when you sit with the teachers in India, the questions disappear. Mm, okay. And, and why that is, is because the questions are of the mind. And when the mind quiets, then the questions disappear. That's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, can you speak to, um, I I read a little bit about your background, about um, the significance of India. Did you travel there? Did you actually live there for a time? Well, I was first there in 86, and uh, 1986, and uh, the, I I was living in a spiritual community. I took on an Indian teacher in the, in the seventies, in the mid seventies, and I lived in an, uh, ashram community in California for 20 years oh, wow. with an Indian teacher. Uh, <laughs> and um, so I went there in 86 and starting 99, uh, I left the community and I uh, separated from my wife and my kids were grown uh, pretty much. And uh, so I started a sort of a second phase and that included a lot of world travel. I spent, um, I've only had one uh, non-COVID winter in the U.S. since 98. Mm. And uh, so we're not traveling now, but I met my wife, who's Dutch, in India. And uh, I ended up living there for the last time, seven months, usually four months in the winter. I, I sometimes went to Thailand, but I had a import business for 12 years. That's what got me over not the first time to overseas but it got me going back i i bought handicrafts that sell in the metaphysical bookstores and such that um we had 200 stores at the at the height i traveled around in my vw van and sold uh, items that i had bought and i had a chance to travel everywhere i've been to 56 countries i bought in india nepal and thailand and bali and 
and um, Guatemala and Ecuador and uh, Turkey and I've been wow. to had a chance to be in a lot of places and enjoyed uh, interacting with those cultures um, spiritually somewhat because that's part of me but also the marketplaces you know you go to a place I don't know if you're exactly like that, but I have a feeling you have a little bit of that in you and you go to a place you want to check out the stores and Mm -hmm. see what's around. And so I was doing that in third world countries and had a chance to uh, to uh, buy handicrafts, uh, jewelry and textiles and scarves and singing bowls and all sorts of things. We had a tremendous variety of goods. Wow. You're right. You must be picking up on my vibes because my mom and I actually used to, make, <laughs> we made jewelry. And so we would go to the jewelry stores whenever we traveled. And there was lots of things from, you know, Asia and in the East, um, all over the world and just really cool little treasures. So that is, that is very fun. Wow. How cool. Yeah. So, so I, yeah, go ahead. I, I wasn't so interested. I'm uh, just going to say I wasn't so interested for myself, but I enjoyed <laughs> bringing it back for other people. Yes. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so what would you say are some of the sig- most significant things that you've learned about yourself and the world in those travels? Because that's pretty pretty cool to have traveled that many places. <clears throat> well, you know, the thing is, is what I learned is that the people are the same everywhere that we that we while we have to use these passports in order to get from one place to another the fact is is that uh, nowhere do they like their government mm. and the people are pretty much the same everywhere that they're there that their issues are kind of the same and their um uh and their focus is the same even if it has a completely different energy from being a very developed country to a very undeveloped country they're still you know eating uh connecting having kids having family it's all the same everywhere yeah it's true it goes back to just the basic core principles of what we really need and also i think just what's truly important in our lives family connection health food love it's very simple really Uh, simple, but not easy. Yes. And we tend to make it not simple with our egos and the collective, you know, all of this gets complicated, but definitely. the conditioning. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Yes. Um, what did you study at the ashram? What are some things that you learned and, and spent, you know, time doing? Wow. So uh, actually I did business, uh, it was my focus at the ashram and, uh, uh, many hands make a miracle doing business for, uh, for the, uh, community, not so for myself. I had a chance to do a diff- I ran a store hmm. with my wife at the time and that's how the wholesaling, uh, and the buying things and then wholesaling them was part of that dream. Uh, wow. We learned a lot about discipleship, which isn't really so much talked about right now, but the idea of being that somebody is your master it isn't that you're in servitude it's that you're in respect Mm. and uh, when i left the community uh, that was one of the things i noticed at first uh, the difference is that that other people didn't have that experience or even if they'd had been on the spiritual path that the that uh, the thing that was in well the thing that made us different from many people was the, the discipleship And the thing that was in common with many people at other teachers was that they understood discipleship. That's what we could, we could understand, even if the the teachers were different and the approach was, was different. Hmm. Very cool. Wow. What a cool experience. (laughs) Thank you for sharing all that. Thank. Yeah, Yeah. sure. Yeah. I mean, to pick on one (laughs) thing, I don't know. You know, every sure. day in India, you learn something different. You see something different. The poor people, I like to talk about the beggars. There's a there's a guy that I have seen for 20 years that he just a, a blind man who sings oh. uh, Sri Ram, J Ram every day on the bridge. And you just uh, it just touches your heart so yeah. deeply. There was a beggar who had no arms and legs and uh, sold paintings that wow. he did with his mouth. Oh, my goodness. So that's kind of a teacher, too. Oh, and then yeah. the teachers that I had a chance to sit with and disciples to seeing people come from all over the world, mm-hmm. 
uh, to um, some not really knowing why they're there. You know, I mean, we don't really know why we're there. We don't really know the lessons that we're learning or what we're supposed to learn, or we just appear people who feel put tuned into their intuition. Sure. I had a client one time who said to me, um, explain to me intuition. It was actually Indian mm. in India, but he was not from India. He was living in, I think it was South America, South, South Africa. So he said to me, so he said to me, well, what's intuition? I don't understand it. I said, well, how did you happen to come to India? He said, well, I, I just felt to come. I said, there's your intuition. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Follow the feeling. <laughs> I love that. Wow. So, so everybody knows. Yep. But they don't realize that they know. And so it's becoming uh, that that spiritual path is, is an unfolding of things that you already know, Mm -hmm. but you don't know that you already know. That's true. And then the mind likes to mess around and you doubt things and you don't just listen to that, your gut or your intuition. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely. Yes. It's better to not listen to the mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Most of the time. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I love what you said about uh, teachers. I think that's really what this podcast has been teaching me, like meeting you and uh, when you travel and meeting people, it doesn't have to be traveling. It could be literally a small exchange with someone at the grocery store, random things that happen in your life. Everything can be a teaching moment. Um, I love looking at it in that way. So. Well, that's beautiful, Lauren. Congratulations. The thing is that that's always happening, but you're not always aware of it. Yeah. So that's on you mm-hmm. that you're aware of it. And and you raise the point I like to make is is that the 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 that the the readings that I do that I offer, it's mostly about what I'm sharing is what I need to learn. Mm. Mm-hmm. That that what we're teaching people, if we're teaching them, what we're sharing is the things that we need to learn. And they're mm-hmm. actually paying me to give me an opportunity for me to maybe listen to myself. Mm. Because when I tell somebody that's what they need to do, the chances are that's what I need to do. Yeah, that's a good point too. Definitely. And obviously, if you're interested in something in teaching or sharing, it's of interest to you. So pay attention to that. I mean, it seems obvious. Like, yeah, duh, I'm sharing it with someone. It's interesting to me. But look deeper why and what can I learn from this and you know especially right now there's so much circulating out there there's a lot of controversy and I mean I've been sending a lot of things to my parents and um you know why am I doing that well I find it interesting and critical and relevant I need to also remember that that stuff too right so that's a good point absolutely we we are uh the, the point of relationship is to be a mirror for our own uh, actions, our own behavior, that to be our own teacher. Mm-hmm. Definitely. The people just reflect back to us what we need to, to learn and, and what we need to know about ourselves. Yes. And I think right now what I'm learning is through guests that I've had on and just observing the collective, observing myself, so many people are getting triggered so easily and there's so much division but really what a chance to come together and learn and for the, and not the first time this happened all in history, but right now, wow, what an opportunity to learn from others that are different than us because we're actually not really that different. It just appears different on the surface, right? So instead of pushing away, we have to come together. What a cool time it actually, we could learn so much and evolve right now. It's wild out there. <laughs> Yes, I, I didn't have a two-year seclusion on my bingo card. Maybe you did, but I didn't. But here we are. Yeah. <laughs> well, I actually, so um, we were connected for everyone listening on like a podcast, pod match um, platform. And one of your talking points that you, you know, have on your profiles, like I believe it, it was yours, you talk about like what's going on in the world right now. That's also something I often ask guests, just their, your perspective. Um, would you mind maybe expanding a little bit since we've kind of been talking about that, just like with all the sure. chaos and the change and what's going on, the growth, the pain? Well, I have absolutely no idea what's going <laughs> on and I don't have a need to know. And uh, I don't really take sides. Um, I'm not really in favor of any of it. 
mm-hmm. personally. Um, it could be that we're all waking up. It could be that half of us is waking up, but that's not half is not really a goal. That doesn't seem like a God goal to me. Mm-hmm. I'm going to wake up half the people, but I'm going to keep the other half asleep. So sure. I don't, I don't know what's going on. I think that, that there is a change that we are, that, 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 People, people on the podcast have said, well, what do you think of the Great Awakening? I said, well, I've been waiting for it for 50 years that I know of. Sure. In 1973, they told us there were hard times are coming. And yeah. then in 84, we were waiting for the book to take over. And and uh, in 2000, the world was going to end. Right. And the, the Mayan in 2012. So I've been waiting 50 years. Mm-hmm. And um I've seen incredible changes in the world. I've seen incredible changes in myself. I've seen incredible changes in in the in the culture, in the in the world's culture. I've seen the world grow together. I've seen the West become the East. I've seen the East become the West. Mm. And and so uh, you know, I can in in all uh honesty and with a complete freedom, I have absolutely no idea what's going on. <gasps> What will happen? Well, I think we're just, yeah, I think we're definitely becoming more and more conscious. I've seen yoga studios everywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. Uh, I've seen people come to India from everywhere in the world. I've I've seen people uh, come to me as clients who, you know, what are they doing here? And then I get to look at their chart and their, uh, as an astrologer and sit with them and, and think, wow, there's an incredible depth, whether they're, um, you know, early twenties or, or Mm eighties, you know, uh, it doesn't really seem to matter. The fact is that everybody it's, it's the old, uh, the old survey they took where they asked people, how much money would you like to make? Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever heard this, this was popular, uh, you know, 20, 30 years ago and everybody wanted to make 10% more. Mm -hmm. No matter what level they were on, they always wanted to make 10 percent more. And so the point is, is that everybody is we don't have to compare how much you have and how much I have. But the fact is, is that we're all growing at whatever pace, at whatever uh, in whatever way in 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 that is appropriate for us yeah. at this particular moment. And 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 those that aren't also are. Mm-hmm. You can't leave the path. Mm-hmm. I don't know where else you go. Sure. Ah. I mean, I can I can go to other places on the earth, but the path is also there. Sure. Yeah, you're here right now. Yep. Okay. Fair enough. I love it. <laughs> Sometimes we overcomplicate <laughs> it, but I definitely think there. I mean, it's easy to say like, oh my gosh, all this chaos. It's negative. We're not growing. People are asleep whatever you could throw those terms around, but, and it's hard to describe it. We're in a human body here trying to describe this in language. And like you said, like it just is right. It's hard. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, we're just here on a podcast having fun, kind of analyzing it. But I think, I do think there is a big shift in, in being conscious, whether it's what you're eating. And, um, there's a lot of more awareness about certain things that weren't as popular. Like you said, yoga is more mainstream. It's available to people. There's a lot of healer healers and healing going on that people didn't used to do. And so I do think there is a really cool opportunity right now. And there's a lot of attention on it, um, about tapping into your intuition more, being more conscious. That's something that we're kind of struggling with because there's still so much noise and like social media and media and busyness and distractions, you know, Hollywood, all the things, but I do think there's, like you said, there's been so much growth over the last, we could, whatever, you can't really put a number on the years, but I think right now we're at this interesting point where, I don't know, there's a lot of people, I, again, I, you, some people don't like using the word, term waking up, but becoming more aware. Yes. And, and, uh, when you say about health, I remember becoming a vegetarian in 1970. Mm-hmm. So, so, you know, about these things, I've been aware of these things sure. for a long time, did yoga for the first time at the bottom of the Grand Canyon in 1972 it was the wow. first time I did yoga. So, so I, so I don't recognize that so much. Yeah. Because somebody asked me on a podcast recently, have your clients changed? And I would say, well, no, they really haven't. They're mm-hmm. the people, uh, 
the people are sent to me. They're not somebody that I find. They, sure. they have a reason. What I do is very esoteric, and it's not for everybody. But if they they write me and they say, I want a reading, then there's something going on that's beyond this. But yeah. one thing you said I do want to talk about is noise. Mm-hmm. Boy, the noise, uh, 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 shutting out the noise is really important. The noise is both in our mind. It's both in internal and external. But the fact is that opinions uh, and ideas and what people do and what people don't do, it really doesn't matter to us in our own growth. It, mm-hmm. it matters in how we react to it. Yeah. But it doesn't matter uh, uh, to us directly. It may matter in terms of the environment around us if we have uh, uh, people that make rules that we don't like. But again, that's our that's our focus. Sure. And uh, I, I've been using this question, this sort of rhetorical question. I ask people, I say, if your neighbor makes noise and it disturbs you, whose fault is it? Mm. Yeah, interesting. And so in your 20s and 30s, it may be their fault. But you get to a place where you realize that it's not really their fault. It's actually your fault that you're buying into it. And mm. and and so I use that in, is, uh, um, in astrology to show that the aspects are not, to me, are not that important, that it doesn't really matter what's affecting you. It really, it's just highlighting the situation you have with inside yourself, the mm-hmm. the small-mindedness or the or the, the the position that you're holding or or some some idea that you need to let go of. It's it's pointing that out, mm. but it isn't actually. Nobody can actually make you angry. Nothing can 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 uh, give you fear other than yourself mm-hmm. and and uh, or anger or disturb you. It only can happen to yourself. And so this 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 idea of shutting out the noise is you know, an important part, you know, of you put decades into that, that that, that the noise is uh, to get the noise quieter and quieter and quieter yeah. and quieter and quieter is is a is a lifetime achievement award. That's very true. And it's really hard right now for some of us. You know, I like to be on social media and see what's going on. I find people fascinating. There's a lot of good parts to it right connection learning i've met a lot of my guests on there but it's also incredibly (laughs) toxic it's addicting it takes time it's distracting me from other things there's a lot of fear being spewed out right um so balance as usual but yes i think there is some beauty to learning how to limp put limits on it or whatever works for you everyone's got different bandwidths as well right um but I don't Abs- watch. Absolutely. So you're just des- what you're describing is it's your teacher. Yeah, it can. It teaches me a lot. It also distracts me from other things that could be teaching me. Right. It's well, that's the that's what you're needing to learn is that you're being distracted and to not let yourself be distracted because they because, you know, my experience is that the. Well, I let me put it this way, that, that what I have read is that the that the in the in the in the unfolding of our enlightenment to our ultimate enlightenment that the toughest lessons may be at the end that Mm. there's an attitude towards you know i gave up smoking or i i eat a healthy diet and those are hard lessons but you know in terms of giving up your ego or or letting go of the life they may not be those lessons may be pretty small they're stepping stones they're they're baby steps you got a little baby they're baby steps yeah. mm-hmm. so so they're the lessons the, the lessons and what we need to do just get bigger and bigger and so the this idea of the distractions that it may be social media it may be a negativity in social media but eventually it may be your own ideas of what good health is it may be your own idea of of that you're actually building you're you're actually um developing your ego rather than Mm. in developing your business 
rather than letting go of your ego. Mm-hmm. And so the the lessons, the spiritual path has, it, it never, ends, never ends, I don't believe. Oh. So so the lessons and the, and the tests get bigger and bigger. Mm-hmm. I agree with that, definitely. Yeah. Um, good segue, because you had mentioned astrology. So let's dive into that. <laughs> let's dive into that, your specialty. I mean, a lot of people know the basics. I know the basics, right? Um, You know, you could go into even just like horoscope stuff, planetary stuff. Um, You know, I I know some basics, um, Zodiac stuff. I'm very into it because I I believe so many people that I, not to put people in a box, but there's just something. I'm such a Virgo and I am. I really am. It's fascinating, right? But um, when people start getting into these like readings of like Jupiter's in your corner and retrograde and I'm like, oh man, and then it starts to like lose me. But give us like a basic, just your own definition of just kind of what is astrology? Why is it important? And how does it uh, play a part in this, in the spiritual slash, you know, human experience on this earth? I know there's a lot, but just a little basic, whatever you want to, it doesn't actually, it doesn't need to be basic. Take your time with it. Um, okay. So, what is it? so I'm a, I'm a Vedic astrologer, which means that Vedic is the astrology of India. Okay. And I, of course I started as a Western astrologer, uh, but I, I switched over to Vedic. I'm interested in the sidereal chart, uh, which is, uh, a cast slightly differently than the Western chart. The astrology is basically the same. I like to say the Western don't agree with the Western and the Vedic don't agree with the Vedic. So if the Western and the Vedic don't agree, that's just part of the game. Mm. I spent a long time, we're talking many, many, many decades, only in the last 10, 15 years have I come into my own ideas. And in coming into my own ideas about astrology, I basically had to reject almost everything that I heard. I, I never really got into any astrology groups because there was too much groupthink that I really wasn't into. And so what I've come to is that I don't really believe in the aspects. That's what I'm talking about. If your neighbor makes noise, that's the aspect. That's the the square mm-hmm. that they tell you, you know, that it's that it's square and that it's a problem. But the problem is in the planet. It's not in the square. Mm-hmm. It's in it's it's the planet itself. And so I just have ended up with the strength and weaknesses of the core planets. That that mm. when you have a, a, an exalted planet, then that while you can be arrogant from that planet, that's your strength. And if you have a debilitated planet or an enemy or a great enemy planet, those are where we end. We where we uh, those are the problems. Those are the uh, challenges, not the problems, but the challenges that we deal with our entire life that are in the personality. It's not who we are. It's who we think we are. And this astrology chart is of the personality of this life. Yes, there are astrologies that want to bring in that it's past life and it may be, Mm -hmm. but I like to say to that, if I, if I, you know, hurt somebody eight years, eight lifetimes ago, what does that do for me now Mm -hmm. is whatever, residue is with me that's what i've got to deal with the fact that it happened then may be true but if i sit in that i'm not really dealing with right here right now what's going on and so and so that's part of the noise the part of the noise is the this is retrograde and this is going to be good and this is going to be bad there's no that there's no idea of your in the in the newspaper astrology there's no idea of your personal chart in that Mm. and so and so you know for example if you have a strong mercury maybe you don't get affected by retrograde mercury Mm -hmm. just to pick up on that so so yeah i've had to shut out a lot of the noise and what i come to is through intuitional hits of just in the moment, just inside. I remember I had a teacher that said to me, where'd you, where'd you hear that? I said, well, I think I read it. And he said, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I said, I probably made it up. And he said, yeah, you probably (laughs) did. And, you know, I, 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 I say things, uh, uh, you know, I go to a show, uh, you know, and I meet somebody I've never met before and they give me their birth time and I call up the chart and I say, you're like this, you're like this, you're like this. And they say, absolutely right. And I say, it's not a setup. I never saw you before. How sure. do I know? 
Right. But there seems to be some patterning. And so the astrology I do is to help people to wake up to who they really are. I'm Mm. not interested in making a better story because the better story is still story. The better story is no story. Mm -hmm. So I want to get people out of their story by giving them their strengths and their weaknesses in astrology to help them to realize what it is, the difficulties that they're, that they're, uh, what the challenges are that they're dealing with in order for them to be able to put a, a, uh, to, to bring their, um, attitudes, you know, their mental uh, faculties into being able to to adjust their atti- their attitudes and their behaviors according to the fact that they 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 you know I have a uh, a client who told me uh, the hu- husband isn't spiritual but I look at his chart and there's no spirituality in that in his chart I mean the spirituality is in how he is it's not like her in how it is for her Mm. and and uh that can be an incredible pressure release for people yeah very cool to realize that that it isn't really me it isn't really you it just is and so and so yin and yang attract each other Mm -hmm. that's the story Mm mm-hmm yeah, I mean, I always like to just joke about this. Like, we're all just energy, right? It's just another way of a, a human way to just define. Just it's easier to say we're just like energy. It's all energy, but patterns, energy of shifting things and the planets and the space. I mean, it makes sense, kind of really, when you think about it. It's a more simple way to define what's going on. But you said patterning. So yeah, does that, patterning. Does that mean that, um, again, like in the human way of describing it, different planets hold different vibrations, if you will? I mean, there's a lot of talk right now about, you know, Earth's moving into more like a 4 and 5D, fifth dimension, higher, you know, vibrations. For people that don't know, don't know what that is, you could, I mean, again, this is just me trying to describe it. It's, it is what it is to you, but a more loving, evolved uh, dimension um, are other planets from your understanding in different dimensions and then that can affect us here on this planet well I uh, yeah I'm not sh- you know it could be that the earth is changing it could be that the earth is just moving into a different part of space mm. there there is a theories about that that as it moves along it's to a higher it's to a higher uh, sphere, but I think that the the planets have different frequencies. This is clear. They have different colors. They handle different aspects. They they, they their energies um, affect different aspects of the human life. Mm-hmm. And uh, somebody asked me on a podcast, "Well, what do you think is the greatest challenge?" And I said, "the the greatest challenge was Venus." But mm-hmm. she was, I think it was a she. She was very surprised about. It's the greed. It's the it's the low side of Venus. It's the greed. It's the it's the comparisons. It's the judgments. It's the uh, blaming. This is the low side of Venus. People think of Venus as is love, but all the planets have love. Mm-hmm. It's it's a sticky kind of love that that Venus deals with. But on the low side, it's it's judgments and it's comparisons. But people don't know, and I I would say ninety ninety percent of astrologers don't know that Venus is uh, while it's our sister planet, it actually moves backwards. The sun rises in the west and sets in the east. It said that it was hit by an asteroid uh, early on, and its year is shorter than its day. A year being circling the sun. Mm. And it's a day being circling itself. It's day is longer than it's year. And that it's 93 times the density of the earth. And it is the hottest planet. It's hotter than Mercury because Mercury has no cloud cover. Uh, Venus has a cloud cover, holds the heat, and it gets up to 800 degrees. Mm. And so it's a pretty 
um, horrid place in the sense of uh, paradise and looking out at trees and beautiful sun sure. and blue sky. That ain't Venus. Mm-hmm. You know, it may be it may be in Hollywood. You know, you mentioned how it may be in Hollywood, but it isn't astrologically or astronomically. It's it's not the way that it is. And mm-hmm. so and so each of the planets have a high side and a low side. They're neither good nor bad. Everything is neutral. Sure. But because it's in our solar system and it's like a sister planet is the idea maybe that because it's emitting different frequencies and energies, we absorb some of that. Absolutely. That's what that, astrology is, I guess, in that, a way, right? Just like just like if your neighbor gets makes noise rather than blaming him or her, you realize that you're affected by noise. And that you're still attached to having things your way, Mm. which is a very difficult as a human because we're not in control of anything. Right. But we always try to (laughs) control. Absolutely. Until we don't, until we stop listening to the noise. Yeah. The ego. Wow. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. Well, that's really interesting about the frequencies and um, you know, I was talking to another guest that was speaking about Pluto being kind of like, I don't know how she, now I'm forgetting. I got to go back and watch it. Something about like the dark, dark night or darkness of Pluto right now. And again, it's not necessarily good or bad, but that, you know, could be affecting us right now. Different things like that. Absolutely. I don't particularly work with the outer planets. Mm. And that is because they are slower. They're more generational mm. than they are. Uh um, affecting our individuality, which is what I'm more interested in. I want to help you people to wake up. And so in order to do that, I'm more interested in the inner planets, including Jupiter and Saturn okay. that affect us in a more personal way. The outer planets affect us generationally in larger ways. Uh, and that does not have, uh, that to me is noise. Is it because they're further away distance wise that we have a little less Further away, distance-wise, and they're also smaller, yeah. and 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 that um, um, they're more they're more of a modern invention. Mm, okay. And I read something interesting recently uh, that I that I found interesting was that um, when we discovered uh, Uranus and Neptune, that there were things in those particular years that that we then discovered uh, culturally. And I thought that was kind of interesting, Mm -hmm. but still that does not really, and so they could have an influence on us, but it's more generational. Um, And so the generation, um, it's hard to wake up from generation. It's, it's easier to wake up from individual, your own individual problems rather than generational problems. Wow. Oh, my mind is like, because I love space. Like my husband, I've been geeking out so much on space and planets and it's so hard to like comprehend because it's just so vast and think of all the stuff we just have no idea about the shifting and the changes of space and that earth is moving and then there's all these other planets and there's planets we don't know about and other life out there and how it all affects everything. And I mean, it doesn't really matter, but it's just fun to talk about, meaning it doesn't matter in the fact of like, it just is. We always come back to that, right? But yeah, you still you still need to eat in the morning. Or yeah, in and the I mean, yeah. we may never know in our human brains, but I just it's just fun to ponder. And space is just incredible. I don't know, and yeah, astrology just seems that's a huge topic. I mean. Well, I, I think what I want to share with you is the idea. You you like the uh, the idea I mentioned before, the which I forget. I think frequency, mm-hmm. but also imprinting. And so I was what I was taught by. I, I found a very esoteric teacher who taught me an awful lot and explained things to me that I kind of wanted to know about. This was more than twenty, uh, about twenty years ago, a little bit more than twenty years ago. So he told me that we get imprinted, and so there are cosmic energies that are that are coming at the Earth all the time. And so when we're born, there is an imprinting based on the positioning of the planets. And mm. so I do a lot of work in my astrology work with the, with the shape of the chart at birth. And mm. I know that, and I learned this originally from, um, 
one of the uh, the masters from the 30s and 20s and 30s, the 1920s and 30s and 40s, who's one of the uh, people who I read the books of when I first started. But I've, I've taken it even further. But the shape of the chart, whether your planets are all really uh, close together or whether your planets mm. are all really further apart or whether they're clumpy or not clumpy, this all has an imprinting. Uh, uh, beyond specifically which ones they are, mm. that has a, a. I had a client up in your neck of the woods, and uh, she, as I remember, had planets really close, and she was working in the, the family business. I said to her, I said, well, your planets are really close. You have a narrow focus. And she said, well, what do you mean? And I said, well, the business that you work in, what percentage of the business do you do you is your bailiwick? And she said about twenty five percent. I said. I think she said 33% or 25%. I said, well, that's what I'm trying to tell you is, is that your focus is very narrow in life. It's mm. it's not the, that you know 100% of your 25% or 33%. I think she had planets in, mainly in four houses. And, and so she's 100% into her 33%, but mm. there's still eight empty houses of which she doesn't really have much of a clue, even as a 60-year-old. I believe um, it isn't her nature to uh, we don't know what we don't know. Yeah. And I, I had trouble getting her to understand that even with this example, it was still hard for me to get her to understand that she really knew what she knew. But there's a lot that she didn't really understand. And that's really neither good nor bad. It just sure. is. It's just sure. her particular incarnation. Sure. That there is a reason for that. Um in terms of what she's going to learn and what she's going to have to deal with. Hmm. So it's almost like you think it's almost, it seems as almost like it's already just laid out. Like it just is what it is. You have this chart and there's just positioning. That doesn't mean you can't grow and learn and change things, but it's almost like you're presented with it. Each one of us is kind of presented with this. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, well, we have free will, so we have choice. But exactly. if you're, if you're, uh, you know, white, born in the United States, and your parents have money, then you have certain advantages. Sure. Uh, and so that's a start right there. You know, mm -hmm. if you're if you're born in in other places and you don't have any of that, you know, uh, then um, you have a completely different life, but you still have the same uh, opportunity to learn whatever mm -hmm. your lessons are. You have the same yes. free will uh, that you can overcome. The um, you can get the American, the great American success story, and 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 be whoever you want to be. But within that, you still have the challenges. Is that you're going to be the height you're going to be. You're going to be. You're going to have the body type you're going to have. You, you're going to have the you know the the natural hair color you may change the hair color but you but you've got those natural uh, abilities and a natural um givens that are not that that you know that the the beggar who draws pictures with his mouth didn't find as a limitation right I wanted to take a quick break to tell you about a special company that I've been digging lately. You probably know from some of my earlier podcasts that I'm very passionate about companies that care about their customers and the earth. With that said, I'd love to tell you about Ana Luisa Jewelry. I love that Ana Luisa creates timeless and chic jewelry while being earth conscious and sustainable. They're carbon and water neutral. Really cool. I appreciate how fair their pricing is for such high quality designs. Pricing starts at $39 with sales up to 25% off. If you're looking for a thoughtful, affordable, and unique gift, head on over to analuisa.com for a Valentine's Day gift for your special loved one. You can use this special link to shop. shop.analuisa.com slash Lauren Live. Lately, I've been loving their Zodiac-themed necklaces. You know me, I love astrology and all the woo-woo things. So I picked out a gold-plated Scorpio pendant for my mom, and it is stunning. New jewelry collections are released every Friday on their site. Shop.analuisa.com slash Lauren Live. I'm thrilled to share conscious brands with you that I believe in. I hope you check out their site when you have a moment. Head on over to shop 
com slash Lauren Live. That's A-N-A-L-U-I-S-A, Anna Luisa. You'll love all of their amazing designs. Wow. Yeah. But I guess I meant in the sense of like, you're born like Jane Doe's born on like, I'm making this up like October 5th, 1977. The planets were where they were, right? I mean, if you're looking at it in like a Zodiac yeah, yeah, you way. you can't move the planets. So no. kind of you're almost just, you're brought into this world where there's just a certain frequency or patterns or energy. Now, of course you have free will, you can learn and there's a whole bunch of stuff mixed within there. I'm not defining it, but it's almost as though, you know, there's lots of theories. We choose our lives. We choose our souls have different things that you can come in and learn. You might have karmic stuff from past lives. I mean, who really knows, but it's almost like with the astrology stuff, it's kind of just, it is what it is. You're brought in during that time, but a lot of people don't explore that. And like you're saying, you could learn a lot about yourself and different opportunities or challenges to become your best self and to learn some of your purposes and different things, but it could be all a lot of it could be very based on some of the energetic patterning and different things with the planets. And that's fascinating. Well, absolutely. And in, and in fact, there is a chart in, that we use in Vedic astrology called the Namamsha chart. And I've known about it for 25 years, but for whatever reason, it was only in the last six months that I learned that I was ready to learn mm. the, the, the true meaning of the chart. And so they always called it the spouse chart. And I'm trying to figure this out. But it turns out it's the it's the perfect spouse. And so who is the perfect spouse? The perfect spouse is us at our highest level. And so this Navamsha chart, it's a divisional chart, which means it's like turning the micro the, the, the microscope dial to a to a, a more uh, intense lens. And so you divide the chart, it's a divisional chart, you divide the chart by nine. And so it really focuses on the ninth house mm. more than you need to know. But I, I want to give that a little bit of that background. So what it is, it's, it's sort of an end of life chart and it's who you become. And so you can, you can, you have these challenges of the, this, of your birth chart of this and that, and this of your birth chart, but eventually become this other chart. So now I've worked it with 60s and 70 year old people and they, they are living that life. Mm. And I've worked it with 40s and 50s and and they recognize that life. And I've worked it with 20s and they realize that life, too, even though Mm. it's a little bit further away, that that who we become is um, is an expression of this particular chart. And it's amazingly powerful in that way. That is really cool. Um, do you know who, who made these charts originally? Did they have traces back, you know, in history, like some of the people that kind of created some of this? I mean, there's surely there's things with the Egyptian culture. They did a lot of things with the sun and, but I wonder, do you have, is there a history? We don't really, you know, I spent, uh, I spent, uh, a couple of years, I think in the last 10 or 15 years, in the process of st- of stopping doing, I traveled for twelve years with this import business, and then, and then I I stopped doing that. I kind of got tired. It wasn't that I was old, even though I'm old, but it just wasn't. It wasn't the time to do that anymore, and so it was time to take on this astrology that I always wanted to do. And in this in this time a period of approximately. Uh, 10 to 12 or more years ago, I spent a year or two reading books on the history of astrology. Mm. And what I've come to understand is, is that there was a, uh, we don't really know where we got astrology from, and it could have been given to us from ETs. Mm -hmm. It it, it definitely, the roots of it it can come from a higher age, but it's not in the Vedas, even though this this Vedic astrology is actually a marketing term. It's not that astrology is in the Vedas. Mm. And most of it came up, most of the rules that we follow came up in the, in the Kali Yuga, which is the dense period. Mm. Uh, approximately 1,200 uh, years ago, 1,500 years ago, the Greeks made a lot of rules, mm. and, and it was a dense time. It was coming into a time of rules. And so this is the problem with astrology, it, that we've t- the same discussion we had 15 minutes ago, is, is that 
people believe these rules mm. rather than the energy behind the rules. Right. That's what I have done is to ignore the rules and try to figure out the energy behind what's going on. And so is to free myself from from now I'm sl- now I'm talking about the conditioning of our life that we need to be a doctor or we need to have 2.5 kids or we need to be successful a certain way or we need to be this or we need to be that in astrology the idea is to let go of these rules because they're they're the whole idea is limiting it's the rules come from a a a dense time when we were trying to legitimize how can we figure this out? So we make up a rule. We, we, mm. we heard a story in India. Uh, I heard this story, I don't know, 40 years ago that there was a, there was an Indian wedding and the Indian weddings are very traditional. And so you, you have to collect the fire bowl because you, you, you walk around the fire and you have to collect this and you have to collect that. And there was a dog barking and somebody said, well, tie up the dog. So they tied up the dog. And so the next wedding season, they went and they went about getting together. So they collected the fire bowl for the fire and they collected the special chairs and they got the, the, uh, the priest. And then they said, well, what about the dog? So somebody got a dog and tied him up. Mm -hmm. And this is what happened for century after century after century is, is that we, we made up stuff that kind of fit in. And what we're doing now is we're letting go of all of that. And it's been, it's been uh, full on for 120 years based on that. We're in Dwapara Yuga, not in Kali Yuga anymore to my thinking. And, um, and this is why everything's changing. And it is just merely the beginning of uh, the Kali uh, Dwapara Yuga is, is said to be 2000 years long. We're 120 years in. Mm-hmm. I, I said to a podcaster, that's, I think that's what 6%. It's like, if you were pregnant, you wouldn't even know it sure. yet. And so, mm-hmm. and so people are trying to write the, the, the end of the story is that it's mm-hmm. an energetic age and we're, we're waking up and it's new healing and da 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 but we're you know it's it's um it's it's just the beginning and to even put a, a, a an idea of what it's gonna look like or what it looks like now sure. or what we're happening i i don't waste my time on that i i'm i'm more interested in helping me and you and all of the, all of the other people to wake up sure yeah we got a lot coming, I'm sure. <laughs> but <laughs> wow, what it is a cool topic and a cool time to be alive. And I mean, there is something just to it, though. I think like, again, not everyone fits their sign. I know there's like talks about like new, new signs now. They shifted the dates, which that... It's confusing to me. That's my human like. So I think that's the sidereal. I think you're talking about sidereal time. Yeah. And why I are they doing that? that? Mo- why are they? Well, they're, yeah. I mean, it's it's older than the that system. They're going back to the, the Greeks changed it. Okay. The, the Greeks came up with tropical time that Western astrology is built on. But sidereal time, with the the Indians were doing sidereal time all the time. Star time based okay. on the chart being twenty four degrees difference. Now the two mm. systems were the same in four hundred A.D. But now uh, fifteen hundred to sixteen hundred years later, we're now twenty four degrees difference. Mm. It's where the planets actually are, okay. and and so it's. It's the, the Western astrology chart has a frequency and it gives you some really interesting facts and they can be very true. Mm-hmm. But the Vedic astrology chart that I use has a different frequency. Mm-hmm. And that frequency, the chart that I use, I use it because it gives me the frequency of helping people to wake up to who they are. It gives me the core challenges. I'm not interested in finding all sorts of problems that you need to, that you think you need to rectify that Mm -hmm. this is square this. And, and this is, uh, uh, you know, and this is aspecting this now, and this is, and the planet is here now and it's on this. It's it's just, it's just all noise going back to what you said. It's all noise. But the fact is, is that if your son is debilitated, then you're going to have 
self-esteem issues your whole life. Mm -hmm. And and the way to get over that is to go to the high side, is to be self-aware, not sit in the low self-esteem, because all of your behavior and all of your conditioning is going to come from this, I need to build myself up because I my son is weak. Mm-hmm. Good points. There, I was going to say there's just something to like, if they were to change the dates on what, for what we know, like the modern astrology charts and stuff, so many people that I meet really do amplify, you know, characteristics of their signs. Again, it doesn't have to be like everything's in a box, but I just find it fascinating. I'll use myself as an example. I am such a Virgo. I really, to a T, I've read birthday books, like my birthday, to a T, like hygiene regimens. And I'm very like orderly, like every little detail. I'm like, that's just fascinating. Like there's something to it. I mean, I'm not going to like marry myself to it, but I, I do. I meet so many people and I'm like, oh, they have such like Taurus characteristics. Again, not to box them in. I find it more interesting. So there's something to the fact that a lot of people do match with the characteristics of the signs and when they were born. So if you were to shift those dates, maybe it's, I don't know, it's interesting. So what happens is that for many people, other planets move into the Virgo for you. Mm. So it could be that it's not your son. It could be that it's your Venus that is an artistic self that Venus is very important to you. Mm -hmm. And so you live out of your Venus, which is in Virgo. It's not your son, which maybe has moved to Leo. It moves backwards 24 degrees. It could be that if you, that if your uh, natal sun is 24 degrees or higher, then it still is in Virgo. And so it isn't. I see. So not everyone changes or yeah. Not everyone changes. Some people, it changes houses, and in some people, it doesn't change house. It really depends on exactly the degrees and how the chart lays out. But but um, some of it is... Um, well, I'm I, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go a little bit further into this. I don't want to go too far for people, but but Virgo is an interesting one because I read a book. Oh, maybe I don't know, six or eight years ago now. That was that was published in the late 60s and uh, in this book uh, this this was an astrologer who was pretty esoteric he's actually someone i really relate to but he wasn't particularly well known and i i ran into his books i think from a bibliography of another book and in that in the beginning of a chapter he says the virgin virgo the the virgo virgin is now She's aged 35 years and 2,000 years. That Mm. she isn't 15 anymore, she's 50. Mm. So what was he referring to? What he's referring to is is that Virgo is traditionally a mutable earth sign. Mm -hmm. And this analness has nothing to do with Virgo. Mm. It's it's a it's a mute it's like the 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 Woodstock goddesses you know the the dancing you know naked or not naked that's the virgo that's the virgin virgo at 15 that's who she is but she's been made into this 50 year old anal detail oriented Mm -hmm. and the reason for that he describes he says he went back to an astrology book from 1922 And in that book, there were 30 definitions of Virgo. Ten of them, he said, were Mercury-related, Mercury uh, ruling Virgo. Ten of them were uh, traditionally Virgo-related. And ten of them were Leo. Mm. And why is that? Because Leo is a fixed sign. Mm. That's the analness of Virgo. It's because the Western astrologers say it's Virgo, but because it's actually Leo, they have brought Leo qualities into their definitions of Virgo. Oh, wow. (laughs) So I'm Virgo probably, but I have Leo in there as well. Yeah. So you're Leo, you know, you're, I want to do a podcast. How long did you think about it? You know? Okay. Here we go. How long did you, how long did you think about it? Yeah. Okay. There's so much here. That's really, (laughs) that's really cool. I don't think you thought about it very long. I think if you're the Virgo, then chances are you're a Leo and you didn't think about it very long. You just went for it. And that's not Virgo. That's Leo. Oh my gosh. I've been living a lie my whole life. You haven't been living a lie. I know. I'm kidding. <laughs> but uh, but uh, you, you're getting my sympathies. Maybe that's uh, okay. I'm <laughs> open. Compassion. I'm open to it. <laughs> Very neat. I love it all. Well, before we wrap up, I, I wanted to make sure we touched on 
Well, now I have two planets if we can fit it in. If you guys can see on my wallpaper on this side, I've got the sun coming in. The yeah. sun is a big, powerful, <laughs> amazing. bigger and bigger, yeah. Amazing planet. And then the earth. So I'd heard earlier this year, and I've talked about it on many podcasts because I'm fascinated and I really want to study more about it and, and you know do my inner channeling with, with planet earth and the sun, um, that planets are conscious. It makes so much sense. I just never thought of it in that way. And there's, of course, energy admitting and love and, uh, you know, it's our home, Mother Earth. Describe that to us. What, is, what does that mean, Mother well, every, Gaia? Every, everything is made of consciousness. Yeah. That's the only material we have. That's the only building block we have. Yeah. It's consciousness. So everything is alive. Everything has consciousness. Mm -hmm. uh, people talk to rocks. People talk to trees. People talk to nature. Mm -hmm. Nature talks to them. Mm -hmm. um, we. Um, so can Mother yeah, Earth hear us? Like if we were to pray to her, or speak to her, can I'm saying her, the feminine energy, Mother Gaia, but like. Can she so feel the thing is, is that we're, you know, we're actually talking to ourselves. There isn't actually any distance. Mm, it is all one. Us and the, it's all one. Right. Yeah. There is no distance. We're just, we're just uh, making up that we're talking to earth when we're really talking to ourselves. So mm. I wanted to share this, this quote with you. Uh, this is from Ken Wilber, who's a real brainiac. Many people will, will know him. Um, he says, it's not harming the biosphere. It's not it's not that harming the biosphere will eventually catch up with us and hurt us from the outside. It's that the biosphere is literally internal to us, is a part of our very being, our compound individuality. Harming the biosphere is internal suicide, not just some sort of external problem. Mm -hmm. And that's that. why we feel so connected to the earth when we walk in nature is because it, it it's it's uh, I put up on Facebook recently another quote that it isn't that our small self is seeking the big self. It's that the big self is calling in the seeker, mm. the small self. Mm -hmm. So we got so much backwards. You yeah. know, the life is very counterintuitive. The meek shall inherit the earth. Uh, you know, letting go is the way to get what you want, you know, not what you want, but, but, uh, what you need, what it is that you want, you let go, you know, you want a guy, you let go, you don't, you don't pick up another dating site or more, you know, or six, you know, it's about letting go and letting, and letting nature take its course. And mm. so it's, uh, life is very counterintuitive. And so, you know, a lot of I'm, I'm getting the, the intuition to say this, to tie it back, is that a lot of this great awakening has a lot of ego in it. Mm. And so there'll be a I, I'm, I'm feeling right at this moment, for whatever reason, to say that there's going to be a washout is, is that we're going to go that, yeah, we're more aware and we're and look how more powerful I am now that I'm healthy. And it's all building up ego and it's mm. going to be a washout from that at some point. I can't say whether it's going to be two years or 20 years or 200 years. Sure. But the fact is, is that what we're doing, what is what's really going on? A lot of what's going on is developing ego. And and people have found better ways to develop their ego, and um, spiritual and ego, them. right? You could have a yeah, spiritual, spiritual ego, ego. Mm -hmm. yeah, spiritual bypass, spiritual ego, and it's still ego, yeah. and and so it's another it's another lesson. It's a lesson of the I like to say that thirty five is the height of arrogance, and mm. so maybe we're in uh, you know maybe we're coming into uh, into our thirties here. You know, it's not it's not a it's not adolescence. Oh this boy, is I much looks like I'm mature. at the height of it right now at 37. I better watch out. <laughs> well, you're over the height, but, but the arrogance is, is that I know better. And right. so, and so I like to say that at a 20, if you say to a 20 year old, you need to open your heart. They say, no, I don't. But if you say it to a 50 year old, they're going to say, yeah, you're the third person that's told me that this week. Yeah. Tell me mm, more. And, and that's because they've let go of their arrogance and they realize that um, that they need, um, that there's something that they need to learn, that there's things yeah. outside themselves 
that sure. are important, that are bigger than the issues that they're dealing with, that, 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 that getting a bigger aura is not necessarily a better aura. That's true. Oh, I'm really glad you said that because it's striking a chord with me and I feel humbled like listening to you and I, I can see it already being coming another lesson. Because, you know, again, it's so hard, like as humans on the show, when I talk to people, we go down rabbit holes. We are only describing it in the best way we can in our language here on earth in English, da, 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 right? Our 3D, whatever you want to call it, experience, or whatever. We're defining it just to have conversation so people can understand what they're listening. But I don't know what else to call it sometimes. So I do, I call it, you know, I'm one of those people too. I call it this great awakening because I don't know what else to call it. And I guess there, you don't need to define it. Um, I do feel like there are a lot of people that are waking up to some of the noise though and the programming that we've been told. And, it, you know, we're having these huge wake ups like I am. A lot of the stuff I've learned, I'm feeling like, oh, I don't feel truth in that anymore. I feel like there's a lot of like evil and bad and I want to remove myself. So there's a lot of like positive growth, but I can also, and I try not to use these words because I, I hear them on pages that I follow too on Instagram, like, oh, the sheep are still asleep. And I realize that's disrespectful. That would be me, me or whoever's saying that. That's ego speaking as well. So I'm I'm glad you brought this up because it's just a continual reminder because that's the whole reason I'm doing this podcast is to be more loving, you know, talk about being more conscious, growth, all positive things. But of course, I'm a human. I have an ego. I make my own mistakes. Um I guess I just don't know what else to call it. There, it are, no, there are no mistakes. Yeah, but I, I, I am big on this whole like awakening only because I see it as like a positive, like it's a liberation from like media, toxicness, people telling you what to do, like all the stuff that's going on right now. And sure, we don't have to overly focus on it, but I never thought about that stuff. And I finally feel like I'm kind of thinking more for myself, which there's millions of people doing that right now. And so it does feel like this a mass awakening, but I guess it really resonates with what you're saying is like, I, I want to be really careful too. Like I don't want to demean others that don't see it the same way, or I don't want to, my ego to grow too much within that. So thank you for saying that because if anyone's ever listened to any of my podcasts, I don't want, you know, you never feel that I'm doing that. And I thank you, you know, for just reminding me and everybody like, have grace, have love, have compassion. Everyone's on a different journey. There's a lot coming out. It's hard to be here right now, but it's also an incredible opportunity and amazing blessing. So I just thank you for bringing that up. It's a good reminder that I feel like I'm so heightened in my spirituality right now, but I got to be careful and not let that get to my ego. Right. So thank you. Yeah. Well, I think the, yeah, those are all good points. I'm, I'm thinking here that if you trade the the bacon and egg breakfast, let's say that that's not healthy. Sure. And you trade it for a green smoothie and then you get arrogant about your right. green smoothie. I'm drinking my smoothie. <laughs> yeah. And then you, and then you make people feel junky because they don't know about green smoothies. Yes. And what have you done? Right. You know, you've traded one, one uh, prison for another that's prison. True. That's that why true. I don't like to, I like, I like to say, that I'm not interested in giving people a better story. The better story is no story. I mm. want to get people out of story. Mm -hmm. Is to not is to is to recognize the arrogance, uh, the the ego in every in everything, in pretty much everything that we do. Mm -hmm. If that's where it's coming from, and and so and so there are no mistakes. There is nothing. There is no right or wrong. Mm. There is no good or bad. Sure. Yeah. There you. are there are charts that are more challenging and charts that are less challenging. There are lifetimes that are easier and lifetimes that are not easy, but, but the, uh, the, the, the relationship where the people get along and there are no, uh, and not much happens, there's no growth. And the people that fight with each other and break up, there's growth. And yeah. so it's counterintuitive. And, and so once we make a rule then we're then we are nearsighted sure then we're then we get smaller yeah that's a good as point. soon as we say that this is the best then then it isn't the best because because we're holding ourselves in a place sure or we're holding other people in a place mm -hmm. yeah and i think in some ways that's really what we are going through that that's why there's so much like chaos and but it is it's an opportunity for growth it's not bad it's like you said, everything's neutral, but it's a chance to 
find your own truths and, and learn and be more loving instead of hateful. And there's always opportunity, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, where there's only opportunity. I was going to say before that there's a famous Indian teacher that said that I, la- I prefer to teach in silence, but mm. if they don't, if they don't get it, then I'll use words. Sure. And so the best teacher is the silence. That's the silence of nature. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we may hear some birds singing and we may sure. hear uh, trees falling in California, but uh, <laughs> but nature is, is usually, uh, and the sun is quiet. The sun doesn't make noise, mm-hmm. but um, without the sun, there wouldn't be any life. There'd be no uh, uh, photosynthesis, there'd be no uh, green energy, there'd be no green drink. It might be a blue drink or a red drink, right? But uh, the uh, and not to have anything against the green drinks. It's the it's the attitude that this is a better way. That's really really sticky. Mm. And and um, so then, how do you phrase it? I guess just for fun, like okay, when I eat the bacon and eggs, I don't feel as well. And when I have a green smoothie, I feel better overall. And I believe it is healthier, but I'm not going to put any shame or anything into it. Like, what about just kind of sharing truths, which is what I'm trying to do on this podcast, right? Have you you ever had a a piece of birthday cake at your birthday? Well, absolutely. Yeah, how did it feel? Fine. Yeah, so, you know, the bacon and eggs one time, Sure. Maybe. But what if you're eating it every day and you don't feel very good and then you have the smoothie and you feel better, right? So it's like, I, how do we share some of these things, being more conscious of what you're putting in your body for long-term health? It's like, you know, we live in this culture where it's like, if you don't say something just the right way too. So it's interesting, like sharing it humbly. This is what's worked for me, but you know, take what you want from it. Maybe it's more of that approach. Listen in, you know. I think it's better as an offering than as a, you need to. Because yeah, the need to doesn't really work as an offering. the The green smoothie is good, but you can take too much vitamins and yeah. too much pills, and you can work out too much. That's true. Moderation and, and and hurt and hurt your and hurt your body. So so everything has an extreme to to. Uh, you know, I like to say, you know, you have the perfect mate, you know, they're beautiful and they're loving and they're, and they, you know, maybe they come for money if that's the issue, whatever, but you're still going to find fault with them that they're never late. Yeah. They're always on time. Or they're <laughs> always sweet and they never have an edge. Sure. I mean, you're going to find fault with, with the most perfect. Yeah. And so, you know, that they never have a blemish, you know, why can't they have a blemish like the rest of us? <laughs> So we find fault with that. And so we have to be meticulous. I I use the word meticulous a lot. We have to be meticulous in our discernment about everything that we do, that we're not Mm. treating one poison for another, one opinion for another. And we and we pat ourselves on the back because it's a better opinion. I'm not finding fault with you, Lauren, or, or anybody that does this. It's just I'm trying to give the perspective of a of 50 years doing this, 75 mm-hmm. years old. That that from my point of view, um, this stuff's been going. I've been, you know, doing this stuff for 50 years. Some of these things and sure. been waiting, and and I don't find any fault because you're late to the party or somebody's early to the party totally. or not at the party. Yeah, because because if you pick the people not at the party, then you're not at the party. I love it. And I, but I mean, I want to be at the party because I like to have a good time, but you know. Well, the party I'm talking about is the spirituality. The party is, yeah. So, so the spirituality is, I mean, how many people do you have you met that are, you know, like, like, um, how, how many, uh, uh, spiritual books has your baby read? Mm -hmm. How many spiritual books? Yeah. How many spiritual books have you read to her? maybe maybe uh, maybe one or two or spiritual things you said to her but she's got spirituality down you know as long as you don't uh uh you know the the parent ruins it you know we we condition them out of their spirituality they got it they she's got it um we have it from uh, you know birth originally it's it's within us it's just i know once we yeah, get older, I, 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 I tell this story that uh, I tell it this way, that the baby three to three to six months old grabs her his or her foot and doesn't know it's a foot 
and doesn't know it's there is because it's before concepts. Mm-hmm. And then a year a year later, mommy says, baby's blanket, mm-hmm. baby's blanket. Mm-hmm. And then six months later, the toddler says, my book, my blanket, yeah. my mommy. Mm-hmm. The misidentification has occurred that, 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 that we have taught them the concept of me and mine. And so, so this is mine, but this isn't mine. And then all of a sudden, uh, we lose that we, we, we start buying into all the concepts and yeah. all of the ideas and all of the conditioning. And ah. that's, and then we spend the rest of our life uh, unlearning this misidentification. Right. Oh, it's so hard because it's what it feels like our world. That's how we function as a society and collective, but doesn't necessarily mean it's the right way. Right. It's just the way it is. <laughs> well, I don't, it's, it's how we function function but function uh, function can have a quality to it too Mm -hmm. and so it's it's what we do but we can if you know better you can teach them other sides you can you can you can uh you know it's not uh, do what i say not do what i do you know it's Mm -hmm. it's it's uh it's going to take a while for the for all that to unwind. No question about it. But the the idea is that the more conscious you are, and that you, yeah, and that you instill her with her consciousness, and uh, uh, that's the that's the challenge. And mm. and to give yourself uh, to feel fully responsible for it. And not at all responsible for it at the same time. Mm. I got a lot of lessons that, in here. <laughs> that that that, that you that you don't make up a system. Yeah, that, that I which don't is invent hard anything. because, like, I'm joking a little bit right now. Like the Virgo, I'm very meticulous, and so even with my spiritual awakening and like inf- spirit, I'm in this like info where I just want to learn about everything, which is so good. But it's also I just like balance. There's no rush. That's it. That's but I get it. And excited. Where you, and there's where you feel better. And some of your feel betters may be the commercial telling you you feel better. Yeah. I wonder. Well, we all, yeah. Yeah. So <sighs> the thing, the thing is, is to be, is to be, uh, believe and disbelieve everything. Mm-hmm. I believe and disbelieve everything that there, that there is. So what is the truth? The truth is, is what I feel intuitionally. What yeah. if I feel it in my gut, then that's my truth. That's yeah. my truth for this moment. That's true. There's a lot of truth. It doesn't say anything in, about next moment. Yeah, but there's a lot of truths in a lot of things, you know, I mean, different religions uh, historically have truths, but then there's also things that have gotten out of control. So yeah, you can find truth in, in many things and, and different truth at different points of your life. And it's an amazing, interesting journey. Wow. Well, the different religions, you know, they have, um, that's the problem that it's been codified. Yeah. That it isn't that it's a religion. It's not spirituality. It's not about truth. It's about, uh, it's cultural. Mm -hmm. Definitely. It's not about a a religion, but I mean, I've been in uh, many Muslim countries. I I love them there that they have a, um, a depth to them that I don't find in other countries, yeah. which, you know, and the art is fantastic. You know, the art and the repetitiveness that they have in some of their art is, is beautiful. Morocco has incredible things. Mm. And, and, um, I was in, um, Kuala Lumpur one time I went to a museum, a Muslim museum of history, and they had like a 10 foot, what do they call it? A diorama of, uh, the, um, the temple in, in Saudi Arabia. I can't think of the name at the moment, but the, mm-hmm. the big temple and boy, I wanted to go there. I looked up, I didn't think I could get there, but I wanted to go there and see the monolith standing there. And this thing is 10 feet big to see what's in there. And it's incredible. And, uh, just, I don't, and, and I read Muhammad's story and it was incredible and very inspiring. And the people in uh, Fatima, who was his, his daughter and the hand of Fatima, which is now I bought mm-hmm. these things, I have you them know, in my 15, house. Yeah, yeah, I bought it 15, 
Yeah, and the and the evil eye. I bought, I bought those in Turkey. I brought them back, and uh, I went to these countries and brought them back 15 years ago, and they were not here. And now, now they're, they're everywhere. everywhere. Yes. Yeah. No. I. Oh my I gosh. Knew. I, I bought things, and I could see that I could see them uh, become more and more popular. I saw I saw things come 18 months after I bought them. I would go to the store where they started. Hmm. I got them all over my house. My. <laughs> I'm Greek, partially Greek, so I mean I have all the eyes yeah. everywhere, and I love them. And my phone's got the evil eye case on it right now. But yeah, it's crazy how it's that's come even into like awareness and like a cultural trend, and it's fascinating. Yeah, wow. Well, I feel like we have a we could keep going. Maybe maybe I'll be lucky enough to sit down with you again for a part two. Absolutely. Anytime, Lauren. Be okay, happy to, because uh, to do that. There's so much to talk about. I really feel um, grateful for this conversation and it actually great reminder to me, just the spiritual ego, because that creeps in. It does. And, uh, you know, it's hard part of society. You want to feel right and you want to share that with someone and make them feel that way. And I don't know. There's so much power. I, don't, I don't know anything about that. You got a lot of go. I let go of that a while ago. Well, we can learn from you. <laughs> I don't know. I don't really care much about society. I, I you know, I, yeah. I, I got to travel. I was I got to be a world traveler and, and I'm okay being here. You know, the, yeah. the other side of it is okay too. Totally. After all the traveling, I, uh, mm-hmm. uh, we're having a good time. We're, you know, we're, we have two acres that we can caretake. That is, uh, it's an incredible blessing. Wow. Uh, every, every day we feel blessed. Mm-hmm. by what we have not thinking about what we don't have yeah that's actually been a big gift i think of this whole the lockdowns and the covid and stuff we've spent so much time at home and i just feel so more grateful now than i've ever felt in my life and it's i've slowed down and some of the noise and just looking outside at the trees and my home and the health and the basics man they're not really basics they're everything but it's been really a blessing <laughs> Absolutely. That's uh, that's the beautiful truth. Uh, yeah. You take it down to the basics that it is a blessing. And even if it weren't that way, that's also a blessing. Yeah, everything can be a blessing. <laughs> <laughs> Two. Definitely. Well, where can people find you if they're interested in like connecting with you? Where are you? Are you online anywhere? Uh, well, I, I have a big Facebook presence. Okay. Uh, so they can find me there under my name. I have a website that is that tells a lot about what I do. I offer uh, readings. I call them life readings. Okay. I use three different modalities to help people uh, to become who they really are in order to uh, give them a perspective. They're, uh, they're, I use my approach is science and intuition, that mm. these, are, these are observable sciences. They call them pseudosciences, but they're still observable a patterning in mm. these sciences. And um, I'm not um, so sold on the real science, the quote unquote science, but I don't want to get into that. <laughs> but so these are science and then and then intuition takes over after a while. I want to give people a perspective on their on the their life in order to get them to uh, to uh, much of what I say is not new Mm -hmm. but it's not they don't put it together the way that i put it together you know the puzzle parts but i can make the picture out of it Mm -hmm. or not i but the teachings make the picture it's nothing i do it's just the teachings that i've been studying and feeling attracted to it's all sacred geometry Mm -hmm. that it's a it's a way to to get a frequency that these Three particular modalities have different frequencies, and they give us a clear picture of different parts, uh, different sides of us. And so this, this, uh, these three perspectives. See if I can come from three different ways. They they give us a, an opportunity to learn about ourselves in order to be able to be to find the true happiness, to try and the true peace mm. inside. Very neat. That that's lasting. That never that never leaves. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay. Well, we'll put your website and Facebook, your name uh, in the description of the show notes so people can, can find, find you. Uh, one more thing sure. is I wanted to, uh, I have a free offer that I like to do in the podcast when I remember. <laughs> and so if you would like your Vedic astrology chart, I would be happy to send you your Vedic astrology chart, you being everybody that's listening. Mm-hmm. Um, you have to send me your birth time, date and place. 
um, to my email, Andrew Rinsler, uh, at gmail.com. And also the, another modality I do, which we haven't talked about, maybe that's another time is the Enneagram of personality. And so yeah. if you would like to learn about that, I will send you the, uh, a test of a five or 10 minute test. Okay. It's free. Uh, I'm interested in getting these tools out, um, to people. So if you want to, if you are interested in either of those, just write me or both of them okay. and I'm happy to send it. I'm going to do it. <laughs> Okay. I want to do it. My friends, I have some friends that are like obsessed with the Enneagram and I'm I'm like, I don't, there was like, oh, you're this, I'm this, I'm a three. And I'm like, okay, I need to like learn more about this. (laughs) Did they say you're a three? No, I can't remember. I are a three. You what? That's it. You're 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 making up a number. Yeah. But I do, I took one once, but I don't think it was very accurate. So I'd I'd like to retake the one maybe that you have and see. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That'd be cool. Well, that's again, it has, you know, it, it's used as a, as a, uh, it can be weaponized, but right. again, it has a, it has a truth. Mm-hmm. And the truth is, is that this is your core story mm-hmm. and to know what your core triggers are can be very helpful for people. Absolutely. Definitely. Very nice. Well, thank you for your time. It was lovely to meet you. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. yeah wonderful to be with you, Lauren. Thank you. Thanks everybody for watching. Um, have a wonderful day and you can find me on Instagram at real Lauren live and my website, Lauren live. Take care.